We be exposing scamming holes on the regular. Coming to you live with the most spiciest, populist audience on Periscope. I'm your host, Tamara Bubble, and you gonna get got. Welcome to the room, everybody. Make sure you invite your friends and followers. Swipe up on Android, swipe left to right on iOS. We're gonna get started as soon as the show, the theme song ends. We're about to expose this scammer. Real quick, swipe up if you're on Android. Swipe left to right if you're on iOS. Share this to your followers. Hey. Invite your friends and family and your followers. It's about to get scandalous. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, hey, everybody. I'm your host, Tamara Bubble. Welcome to another episode of You Gonna Get Got. We are on episode... We're moving on right along. CPRM here. Hey, hey, CPRM. You're in Canada, right? Salute to Canada. Um, thanks for tuning in, guys. We expose scammers on the regular. And we're going to get right into it because it's kind of late. And, you know, yeah. So <laughs> I'm not going to hold you very long. I apologize. Normally, we do the show around 8-ish. But oh, it's a little bit past 8. So bear with me. Um, we'll keep it brief. But we're going to keep it going because we have to expose these scammers. Like, it's just it's ridiculous. This is episode 6. This nigga ain't got no gigs. <laughs> Canadian Pinoy Radio, Montreal, Canada. What up? Um, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for being a part of the studio audience. This is a very active, live, dope show on Periscope where we expose scammers. This episode is brought to you by Tamara Bubble Entertainment. This is our episode sponsor. Visit TamaraBubble.com. Also, if you would like to be a sponsor on the show, please just send an email to I think I got got at gmail.com with the subject line sponsor. And we're going to get right into the first segment of the show. This is a scammer alert. Er, 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 scammer alert. When you hear that sound, guys, I need you to get ready to use your screenshot on your phone. It works the same way you take a screenshot. The next photo you see will be the scammer that we are exposing. And this is how you help me expose this scammer, guys. You take a screenshot on your phone. When you do that, um, a Periscope will allow you to share the picture, the screenshot on Twitter. This way we can expose the scammer for the fraud that he or she is. And people will be more aware of it. It's just another dope way to expose the scammer and get uh, more exposure from worldwide. So I'm glad you guys are tuned in, but let's get to it. <laughs> scammer alert, scammer alert, scammer alert. Scammer alert. Scammer alert. This is our scammer. Thanks for sharing this C- CPRM, CSBA Concert Show Booking Agency. If you guys could take a screenshot the normal way you do on your cell phone and share this photo on Twitter. This is our episode six scammer alert. I see those screenshots. Thanks, guys. Each screenshot that you do and share on Twitter, you're helping to expose the scammer. So this will save some artist, some model, some actress, some promoter, some person in the entertainment industry, some money and some time later on down the line if they catch one of these episodes or if they catch your screenshot. So I really appreciate you guys for sharing that. The scammer this week is Eric Smith. Uh, Apparently, he works for a concert show booking agency. Um, He's a show booking agent apparently. <laughs> and his Twitter is Eric Smith CSBA 
Um, yeah, so apparently he's from uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. What up, Katie? Thanks for joining. And guess who got scammed this time? This is a personal story, guys. I got scammed. Like I said, I created this show because I've been scammed before multiple times. Um, and it doesn't, it's not just females that get scammed. It's not just models. It's not naive people. You can sign contracts with people. You can try to be genuine in the business that you do and you will still run into scammers. It just happens. Some people don't do legitimate business and we expose them on this show. So here's my story. <laughs> this is one, one of many of my stories. So Eric is a scammer. Um, I hired him as a booking agent and I'm going to keep this. Uh, I'll try to keep it on him as much as I'm talking so that you guys can screenshot and share the uh, photo to your Twitter, to your Facebook and share to invite your followers. If you know any artists, play your song always. Thanks for playing my music, CPRM. Um, you guys are the best. I appreciate that. I appreciate the support. And, and that's actually a reason why I did this show. So the artists that get scammed, if you've been scammed before, you can send an email to I think I got got at gmail.com. We'll have you on the show. And then also we have a segment later on in the show where we play that artist's music so that people can vote to let that person know whether they should quit their day job or not. We'll let you know if your music sucks or not because it's always good to get feedback. So let's get into this scam. This scammer alert is for Eric Smith. He's a so-called booking agent. And the reason why I say he's so-called is because the title of the show is <laughs> this nigga ain't got no shows. This nigga ain't got no gigs. He's a booking agent that could not get gigs. So let's so let me tell you the story of how this happened. I actually saw him on Twitter. I do a lot of um networking online on social media. So I saw him on Twitter. Um, he would give like a lot of advice to artists and a lot of artists followed him and it seemed like he was giving decent advice. I saw a lot of art. Well, not a lot. I saw like one or two artists that apparently were currently working with him and he, he was booking shows for them. So I'd be interested to really see if that was another account of his. Cause uh, honestly, what I found out is that a lot of scammers have, um, multiple Twitter accounts and the people that are tweeting them or subtweeting them, the ones that interact the most probably are not them. It might, or not a different person, I should say. It's sometimes that person has multiple accounts and they're just, they're weird and they're, <laughs> they're talking to themselves online, giving themselves fake props and fake uh, references so that people will work with them and so that they can scam people. And so that, that's how I got God. I saw like one one group or band, it was a weird band. I've never um, seen them like prosper. I don't even remember the name of them, but they were giving him like shout outs for, hey, thanks for booking shows for me, blah, 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 blah. So I was already uh, getting a lot of shows. I have a manager that books a lot of my shows and things, but I wanted to get a booking agent. So that would, that would be one less thing we would have to worry about. Or that would just double the amount of shows that we're getting already. So we hired Eric. So basically his terms were, okay, you pay me. Um, and this was a couple years ago. Uh, so I was kind of brand new to the whole booking agent thing. Uh, and I guess if I had done more research, that wouldn't have happened. And so that's why I do this show to give you guys the clues and tips on how to not get scammed. And even if it's by uh, sharing a personal story of mine. So I hired this clown. <laughs> Let me put it back on the clown. <laughs> and you guys can um, share this uh, screen, do a screenshot and share this on Twitter. This is our scammer for the day. Uh, Eric Smith, um, found him on Twitter at Eric Smith CSBA. So I will, I was following him on Twitter. He, he started following me back. So I'm seeing his tweets and it's talking about how artists are afraid to perform and how, when they get, when he sets up big shows for them, they always go black. They always go in the dark and they're afraid to perform, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, really? There's an artist that's afraid to perform because I love performing. So I hired him. Uh, the, the gig was pay him a thousand dollars and he would book paid shows like five shows within a year. It would double or triple the amount that I would make. Plus I always sell merchandise at my shows. And so I usually make more money that way anyway. So this was just kind of like an investment. I was already booking my shows. I figured, okay, I'll bring on a, you know, like a temporary booking agent, get some additional shows, make that money back. And it would just be a good investment. So paid him the thousand and we'll just go through like the, the drama that ensued. So after that, uh, this is one of the uh, 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 like clips of some of the emails that I got from him. So this email, and you'll see his email at the top always. Um, yeah, we're going to really expose these hoes. <laughs> so this was like the first booking agreement that he got, or this may not be, I don't, I can't tell the date up there, but this was one of the shows that he got. Okay. I think it was the second show that, or excuse me. This was the second show in his email. He actually never booked one show. He did not book one show. He's a booking agent that did not book one show. So let's just go there. So this is, um, oh, and by the way, in the contract, let me just say this. So I pay thousand dollars. He'll book four or five shows or something like that. And I would make back double the amount, if not more than that. 
especially after adding in like merchandise and all that stuff. If he didn't book the shows in, I think it was a one year time frame, refund the money. So there was no loss. It was really just like, okay, can you book shows? So if you don't book the shows, give me my money back. <laughs> and I'll keep it pushing because I was like I said we were already I was already getting shows my team was already getting me shows <sighs> excuse me that was nasty <laughs> so let me turn it back around um so on the artist performance agreement this was one of the agreements that he booked for me space condo 737 in Jonesboro Georgia for July no that was the yeah that was the date of the performance July 27th and it was a live performance this says the sponsor will make the payment the sponsor had to pay me a deposit no later than June 27th, a month before the show, they had to make the deposit and then the rest would be due in Atlanta, July 26th. Also, these shows were, they would cover travel, they would cover hotel, and of course, it, it's a paid gig. Um, so that was the terms of that agreement and it was in a, a venue in Space Condo. I guess the promoter at that was Right Way Enterprises. I never looked up and found out if that was an actual promotion company or if this was a doctored agreement. The sad part about it is the amount of effort it takes to scam, you might as well do legitimate business. Like, why are you drumming up contracts? Why are you, like, I signed an agreement with him. If, if he didn't book the shows, he would have to give me back the thousand dollars. Like, it wasn't like... Oh, I'm just running around and, oh, just throwing my money out there in the streets and, oh, oh, stole my money. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like, okay. Like, why are you spending so much time to scam when you could actually do legitimate business? I never understood that. So let me go back to the screen. That was like one of the shows that never happened. This show never happened. Every time it would get close to the date or the day after the deposit was supposed to be made, then something would happen. Oh, we got canceled. Oh, we got canceled. He was one of those guys. So I'll just start reading like a string of emails that started to ensue over the course of this year. Um, Hey Eric, hope all is well. I was wondering what's the status of the show. Then that was the show that I just showed you on the previous page. I haven't heard any other updates. Also, I didn't receive any show deposit by June 27th. So already breach a contract. Um, the promoter, uh, owes the money whether I perform or not. Cause in the terms of the agreement, I didn't read the entire contract to you, but if they didn't pay by that date, um, I, you know, either the show was canceled or if they had already paid by that date and something went wrong, then they, the, the deposit was non-refundable. So he said it will post by next week. So he's saying the show is still on, even though it's the day after they're supposed to have given me the deposit and they have not. And he said, it'll post by next week. I got my assistant on top of it. I will surely keep you posted. I bet you will. Uh, <laughs> so July 9th. Now, that's like a week week or two later. I still haven't received any additional info on this gig at Space Condo. Also, I haven't received a deposit either, which was due by June 27th. So I was just making making him aware that, okay, breach contract already. Like, what's up? What's up? Where's my money? What's going on? Okay. And by the way, like I said, this was the second show that he was supposedly had booked, but none of them had went through yet. So I just want to confirm um, that it's still going on. I didn't hear from your assistant either. I don't want to continue to turn down opportunities on this date if the show has been rescheduled or is not happening at all. Please let me know ASAP. So like I said, my team was already booking me shows. And so what I would do when we knew we had a show with him, we would make sure we wouldn't double book. But my manager would book additional shows like in nearby cities so that I could capitalize and so that I could do as much promo in one area and one region as possible because I love performing and yeah so you know that's what I do <laughs> so um I apologize because my, my throat I don't know if it sounds a little sore today but I've been doing a lot of talking running my mouth <laughs> so uh this is August 15th like a month later that that show never happened now he's writing in all caps in an email I guess this was an email blast attention clients I'm unable to take any direct calls please leave an email and I will get back to you ASAP First of all, this is a tip to artists. When promoters, when DJs, when whoever you have given money starts to become unavailable, that is a red flag. If it ain't yellow, it's red. If it ain't red, it's black. Either way, something ain't right because there should never be a point in time where you have paying clients that you can't service. And if you can't service clients, you shouldn't take them on because that's going to make your business look bad. So it's one thing to do bad business. It's another thing to scam. Okay, so let's get back to it. That was his trifling little letter. And in about less than a month, I wrote back to him. Oh, no, he wrote this to me. Hey, Tamara, your second deposit will be available for pickup Saturday, September 14th. I don't know what the second deposit is because I never got any show by this point. There was never a show. Um, your second deposit will be available for pickup Saturday, September 14th. Just 
spoke with the sub promoter. Once your payment is confirmed, they will proceed with travel and hotel itinerary. What up, rapper? Thanks for joining. They will proceed with travel and hotel itinerary on your balance and payment once you arrive in Atlanta. So basically for these shows, they book, he would supposedly book these so-called shows because they're never, not one show. I didn't get one show out of him. Hey, hey, peace. What up? Um, and he's a booking agent and his agreement was that he would book four or five shows within a year's time span. If he didn't book any, he would give refund the full amount of his booking fee. So like some booking agents will charge you a percentage of the book, the shows that they book. And that's kind of cool for you because you don't have to put money up front. Some will take a fee up front. Some will take a fee on the back end, whether it's a percentage of it or just a flat fee. Um, and so his agreement was that <clears throat> he would set up the shows. He would book the shows. If he didn't book the shows, he would refund the money. So, so far we haven't gotten any shows. And so <laughs> this was actually an email from second. There was a second show that he supposedly booked in Chicago for me in June 29th. And like I said, when, when he would send us an email saying, oh, I booked you a show, we would line up other shows around that date so that we could capitalize in that region in terms of promotion. So he sent an email June 29th. Oh, no, actually, I sent this email May 9th saying June 29th at 6.30 p.m. I have a show downtown Atlanta at the Hard Rock Cafe. Can the promoter do the 28th? So he basically it was a double book. I had already had my team had already booked me a gig. And he booked another one on the same date. So I'm asking, can he change the date? He responded back, no, that date was the only date available. Okay, so I don't got the Chicago show, whatever. You still have a year that you're supposed to book me five shows. You have not done any yet. And then I said, also, May 25th, is that show that you booked in Cali? Is that right? I didn't receive a flyer to promote the event further. Like, I was, I didn't mind promoting the events. Like, for me... When I get a show, I'm going to promote it, whether it's some a, a gig that my team booked, whether it's a gig that um, this booking agent booked, it, whether it's a promo gig that someone else has set up for me just because they like my music, I'm going to promote the show. If you put me on your radio show, I'm going to promote the thing. Like when you set up a show for me, don't flake on it. I'm, I'm going to promote. Like I don't have to promote it. If you like if you're giving me the show or whatever, I could just show up and, and be on that. You be on that superstar. <laughs> and don't tell nobody about it. Just show up. But I don't like to do that. Like I, I want to promote an event to the fullest. Like when I'm coming to a city, I'm a touchdown. I'm gonna make noise. So I'm gonna promote. I'm gonna set up interviews. We're gonna. My team is gonna set up that stuff for me. So don't set up stuff that you know you didn't ever have. And then I'm setting up stuff around it. And then you're clashing with it, pretending that oh you went to set up this date. And, and it's like it was so confusing. It was obvious that it was scamming after a while. But the money's already gone, so you're not realizing that. But you start to realize it. So so let me show to you when I start to realize it. <laughs> so the, the May 25th show, didn't receive flights to promote the event further. He said, I spoke with the promoter in the AM. I want to make sure the show deposit for the 25th is issued before they make any move. I do too. Yeah, I, yeah go ahead and do that because I would like for that deposit to come through as well. I will keep you posted with dates. Thanks. Yeah, right. I know you will. So this is another email. This is in October. Um, by the way, I, I forget when he started working. I think it was in like March of 2013. So this is already seven months or so went by. He's already pretend set up like three or four shows now. None of them has panned out. So you, you know by now I'm noticing a pattern. So I'm like, okay, whatever. If he can't book shows, cool. When this year time frame is up, just give me my money back. That's fine. Whatever. So... Hey, Tamara, just spoke to the promoter for Atlanta. The show date is locked and confirmed for your performance on Monday, November 25th. Please let me know ASAP so we can discuss your location for your travel since you be everywhere. LOL. So this nigga is already admitting that, hey, he sees that when he books me a show, I already line up a bunch of shows. My team already lines up a bunch of shows and interviews to maximize the promo. So now he want to throw jokes out there. of, Oh, let me know where you're going to be at. So that my like, it was almost like, okay, I'm booking these little shows for you. Let me know where you're going to be at since you already be everywhere. Okay. I didn't find that funny. Cause like we paid you to do a service. I don't care if I'm everywhere. If I pay you to book me more shows, book me everywhere. And then some shoe. Sure. So, <laughs> So this next email down here says, okay, cool. My manager and I should be in NYC as far as travel arrangements because I have a show on the 21st in Jersey. That was, uh, I think, November 21st. So he's booking a show around that same uh, date in New York. So I would have just stayed up there because I'm back and forth to New York anyway. I'm from Brooklyn. Shout out to BK. <laughs> so by this time, fast forward to February 2014. 
this is not my email address. He sent this here, and I don't know if he did that intentionally so he could say, oh, I sent you the agreement. You never got it. I have been showing you guys emails all this time. How now when it's time to terminate the agreement because you haven't booked me not one single show, you send it to the wrong email? Gmail saves a copy of the email. Once you start to type in my name, the rest of the email will show up. So there's no way you sent it to the wrong email. I don't buy that at all. So anyway, here's the booking agency term termination notice. I ended the agreement. Give me my money back. You're not booking my shows. You're wasting my time. Keep like I'm going through all these emails, all these phone calls. And it's like, you still, there's no show panning out of this. It's not that big a deal. It's not that difficult to set up a show. Like it really is not. Cause my team was already doing it. So I know it was not that difficult. Like it, and you're a booking agent. This should have been hook, line, and sinker. No problem at all. So the reason for termination, artists and agency did not agree. No. Fake booking agent could not book a single show, even though that is his profession. <laughs> that is his specialty. If your specialty is cooking chicken and you burn the chicken every single time you make it, do you really think you know how to cook chicken? I don't think so. So here we go. The reason for termination, artists and agency did not agree due to irreconcilable differences. What? That sound like a divorce ag agreement. Irreconcilable differences. There was no difference. The only problem was you couldn't book this nigga ain't got no gigs. Like he just ain't got no shows. He's just making up contracts. Like, that is so pathetic to me. Like you already didn't book a show. It keeps magically getting canceled and you're wasting time sending me fake paperwork to sign when you know the show's not going to go through because you know it probably never even existed. That's really sad. And all of this just for a thousand dollars. Like that's really all you're going to do this for a year. That thousand has been scammed. That is one month's rent. That is not even anything like you're going through this length. Uh, you might as well have just started ignoring me by now. You're, you're putting in this much effort to scam? Like, this is the termination notice. He didn't even have to send this. Why are we at this point? Like, you're acknowledging that this nigga can't book no shows. You're acknowledging this right now. Reason for termination. Artists and agency did not agree due to irreconcilable differences. An agency unable to confirm shows for artists. Yeah, you can't book no This nigga can't book no shows. <laughs> Artist obtains full deposit of a thousand dollars. So he's going to refund my money at this point. He's finally admitting, Hey, it's been a year. I started in like March of 2013. It's February, 2014. I still have not booked this child one show. Let me give her her money back. You, you bringing up this termination notice. You must've did it before because it looks like you got it. Uh, <laughs> copy and paste ready to go in these emails. So please allow zero to 90 business days. Um, Payment will arrive to artists no sooner than February 15th, 2014. So payment will arrive no sooner than the next day or no later than June of 2014. Um, guys, let me just, do you, do you guys think I got my money? It is, it is now end of 2015. That was, that was 2014. No later than June of 2014. The money did not come through. It's still on the way in, in, Western Union and MoneyGram. It's coming through both of those. It's coming through a green dot card. It's coming through a credit payment. It's coming through PayPal. It's coming through all of these places, but it just, it just, it just can't find me. My own money can't find me back. Like I, I don't, mm, 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 mm. I don't get it. <sighs> so here's the text messages. Now we've gone past emails because obviously emails, like let's not, let's not even try the whole professional thing. Let's just not even go there anymore. Let's, let's stop with the contracts, right? So this is November of 2013. Uh, I was checking in to see what's up with the canceled show. So he did not get the check yet. Once it arrives, I will contact you immediately. That must have been for like a deposit because we hadn't canceled until uh, 2014, like early 2014. So now it's February 2014. I'm checking. Just checking with you to see when I'm going to get my money from the booking agreement. Hey, it's me, the one you owe, Mr. This nigga ain't got no gigs. So he's saying your paperwork will post to your mail. What is all of this? What is like, I hate when scammers try to still be technical. Like I really think at this point, guys, I want you to know that I already know the, the gig is up. The jig is up. The scammer is gone mad. He's not going to give me my money back. So like, I don't understand why they continue to, to, to go with the, you know, your paperwork is processing. Nigga, you ain't got no paperwork processing. This ain't even no email. This is a text. Send me my money. Text that through. Text. Can you text that through? Can you put that through your phone? Can you send that money through that phone? Hop up on that Bank of America app and send me my money. Hop up on that Chase app. <laughs> like enough with all these text messages. Like, please, please. You're not fooling me. 
So anyway, um, in scammers terms, your paperwork will post. I apologize if this is blurry. I'm trying to get it to focus in. Your paperwork will post to your email on the 15th if you need an exact date. However, it can be sooner, but I surely will keep you posted. So you surely will keep on lying. And then, oh, okay, thanks. Hi, I am now a whole nother month later. Hi, that paperwork did not post. I'm checking to see when I'll be getting my money back. I thought I would have it by now. Hey, another month later. Uh, uh, now he's not responding. So now it's to the point where, okay, we know what's up. He's not, he's not giving me my money. Hey, Eric, I know you have until June. I'm just checking to see if you will have it earlier. Great. He's responding back. Oh, snap. He responded back. It must have been April's Fool's Day. Great. I will surely keep you posted once available. As you all know, <laughs> it is well over 18 months now past that termination agreement and still no money. Yeah, that was a scam. Let me just put it back on the screen so you guys can do screenshots of this clown. And that's our scammer alert. A CSBA, concert show booking agent. He did not book one show. So I know he's not booking a concert. If he can't even book club gigs, if he can't even book, you could have booked me at the high school convention. Just like some little spot. Like like the little kids would have not even have known what's going down. Like just uh, colleges, colleges got budgets. You couldn't have did a college show. Like my team does this stuff. That's why I know it's doable. Like you didn't even have to be a superb booking agent to pull this off. You just had to be a right. and you couldn't even do that. Like what? Give me my money back, homie. Just, just no, not homie. Give me my money back, nigga. <laughs> um, yeah. So apparently he's in Vegas. And Oh, let me say this too. Cause I don't, I don't know if this is his real photo. Like I literally could be blasting some other ugly nigga that knows him. But where <laughs> I found his picture on his Google Plus um, website where, where you type in his email in Gmail, a picture usually pops up if you're on Google Plus and that was the photo. So that's what I'm blasting because that's what I'm doing because that's, that's how it's going down because that's what's going to happen. So that is the end of our first segment. You're going to get got. Guys, swipe up. If you're on Android, swipe left to right if you're on iOS. And we're going to go right into the second segment. It's our viewer letters. Oh, no, they didn't. So with our viewer letters, it's either a, uh, if you want to expose somebody trifling, it doesn't have to be an entertainment. Or if you just need advice, you can send the viewer letters to I think I got got at gmail.com. Let's get right into it. So this is an ask the bubble. This is a viewer letter from Rachel. And Rachel says... Okay, I need advice. I have a very great friend who is currently in a terrible situation with his baby mama. She is holding their son over his head and using the child as a threat. Currently, she has blocked him from calling, texting, Facebook, everything for asking to see his son for Christmas. This is really sad. Christmas is coming up and already I smell trifling before I even finish reading this. So it goes on to say they do not have a legal agreement yet, but she can completely cut off my friend from contacting um, or seeing his son. What can he do in this situation? She doesn't understand that she's only hurting her son. He wants to be in his everyday life desperately. Ah, oh, this is a really sad story. Like, just really unfortunate. Um, if you guys in the audience have any advice, type it up and I'll read it out um, to her. Um, but Rachel, thanks for writing in. Um, thanks for asking for the advice. I just... It's really unfortunate. Like this, this happens over and over again where, um, well, one, I think this is trifling. Like this is not the trifling or nah section. This is just ask the bubble, but I still think this is mad trifling. Like I think a baby mother has no, like your relationship, your reason why, why it didn't work out between you. That's, that's between you two adults. The child has nothing to do with that. And you shouldn't punish your child for a mistake you made. The mistake you made was trusting this person to be with you forever. If that's what you were doing. And if that's what you were doing, maybe you should have married him first before you carried his seed. And then you shouldn't punish that child because that child deserves to have both parents in their lives. That child didn't make a wrong mistake picking a father. That child did a good job. <laughs> he got that, that, that man blood running through his veins. That's his daddy for life. Like let, let that child see their parent. Like, I think that's so awful that there are people that will actually damage a, a, a father, a daughter or father, son relationship. I don't know if it's a boy or girl Oh, from his son. Yeah. A father, son relationship just because of a, a bad situation that happened between the two of you. Like that's dirty. That's trifling. But, um, what can he do in that situation? If she doesn't have a legal agreement, it's actually not legal for her to keep Keep him from that. But I, I know you don't want to go over there and then have some d domestic situation and run up on a case that you weren't expecting. So I, I don't know. I In this 
situation, I definitely would say that he probably should contact a lawyer, um, a child court lawyer, a child safety, uh, not child safety lawyer, but like a, a family court lawyer and, and just uh, explain his situation and see what options he does have. I think this requires legal advice. I don't want to give like just baby mama drama advice because what I don't want to happen is he go over there, they start arguing, he probably swat her in the eye and go snatch his son and then that's going to make him probably never see his son and she'll get sole custody and all that good bad stuff so so what you want to do it's very unfortunate but you may not be able to see your son for christmas or maybe you can ask her if you can uh come over there with like supervised rights like you'll just come over while or at least to let you come over let him come over and see his son on christmas while she's there like allow him to bring the presents and at least spend an hour or two with him or whenever, like maybe he can offer her whenever she needs a babysitter, I'll, I'll watch my son. I have no problem watching my son. It's not an issue. I want to see my son. So maybe those are some of the things that he can offer. Um, he can offer her at this point when she's being petty. I really don't know what he can do outside of speaking to a lawyer because it should be illegal for her to not allow him to see his son. I think maybe if he, I don't know, but he should speak to a lawyer. He could possibly bring the police with him for supervised right, uh, visitation rights. Um, but definitely it, it hasn't gone to legal yet, but if she's already blocking you, technically it has, cause you're going to have to get the law enforcement involved to see your child. So I wish you the best of luck. I wish you guys a Merry Christmas and I hope the situation works out. Rachel, if you can, and you see, see this message, um, send us an update and let us know what happened. And we're going to go to the next segment. The next segment is called say something nice. So like I said, a lot of drama goes on this show. We expose scammers. And then we talk about trifling people. (laughs) And then we want to flip the script and say something nice. And this is where we expose some of the good uh, companies that are in the entertainment industry. And one of those companies, uh, if you well, if you are one of those companies or if you know one of those companies, you want to send a recommendation, send an email to I think I got got at gmail.com. If you've used the product or service of a legitimate booking agent, and you want to give a review on the show, send us an email to I think I got got at gmail.com and we will read your recommendation or your review aloud on the air. Today's Say Something Nice feature is Twin Radio. Shout out to Twin Radio. They're actually really twins. <laughs> um, these are good, good friends of mine. Um, uh, they're just really dope. They have an online radio station. It gets a lot of views. If you're an independent artist, I suggest you send them an email. Tell them the bubble sent you. Tell them I'm saying something nice about them. Tell them they are dope. And they already know this, but tell them they are dope. Um, really fun. And they have a good radio station and they have a lot of viewers. So just send your music in, tune into the show, check out some of the music that they play. They play major artists, they play indie artists, but they do support indie artists. So if you have music and you're an artist, send an email to twinradio77 at gmail.com. You can also check them out. I think they, yeah, they air um, every day from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern time on twinradio.net or blogtalkradio.com forward slash twinradio. Here's their, their lovely little logo, and those are the twins. <laughs> um, what up, twins? Um, they I don't know if they want me to shout out their names, but it's Carnell and Darnell, so shout out to you guys. Um, shout out for a dope show, and they have nice fans, and yeah, so <laughs> some internet radio stations, they don't have like any listeners, but this show has like real, real listeners, and it's a good platform for indie artists and unsigned artists, so send your music and tell them I said something nice about them on You Gonna Get Got. Here we go. The final segment. The final countdown. <laughs> this last segment is called Don't Quit Your Day Job. Uh, the reason why we uh, titled this segment that is because the person that got scammed, which in this case was more, it was me. It was me. Um, so usually the person that got scammed, whether it's an artist, a model, an actress, we usually allow you to display your talent during this segment and you guys will vote and let us know if you think the music sucks. If you think it's bad, if you think the acting sucks, we'll play like acting reels, just short clips. We're not, we're not, we're not playing your whole mixtape, okay? We know you got scams and all, but we're not playing your whole mixtape. That's not what we, well, we. That's not what this is about, boo boo. Uh uh-uh, uh, not on boo boo. <laughs> you gotta go to datpiff.com if you want somebody to play your whole mixtape. Um, right here though, we do want to give you legitimate feedback from um. Not your grandma, not your girlfriend, not your boyfriend. We want feedback from people you don't know. So we play your music on this show and we are not partial. We are not biased. We are not even biased to the host. Okay, so if the music is good, thumbs up. If the music is no, 
<laughs> we got to tell them don't quit their day job. And so we're going to get right into it. I am the feature for today. So what I'm going to do is just bring you guys to my YouTube channel. Well, like I said, so the scammer today was Eric Smith. I got it off his Google Plus. So that's, yeah, that's, that's the ugly nigga that can't book no show. Boy. You ain't heard that from me. <laughs> so I'm going to play a little bit of Dear B.E.T. That's a freestyle that I did. Uh, it's not that long, so we'll just go right into it. Thumbs up if you like this. Thumbs down if I shouldn't quit my day job. And I won't hold it against you. I won't block you. <laughs> I like real feedback, so that's cool. So let me know what you think, guys. Thumbs up. Yeah, I see you. Thumbs up if you like this. Thumbs down if I should not win my day job. Cool. Thank you guys. Thanks, thanks, thanks for the feedback. For, the, the, for those of you guys on the replay, leave comments too. Let me know. Thumbs up, thumbs down on the uh, YouTube channel. That's where we post all the replay videos. Thank you guys for tuning in. This has been another short and sweet and uh, scandalous episode of You Gonna Get God. I'm your host, Tamara Bubble. And we're going to take it out with the theme song. I always play the theme song on intro and exit because you guys deserve it. Like, you just, like, it just should happen. <laughs> and I thank you guys for tuning in. This has been episode six. What I'm going to do while the theme song is playing is I'll bring back up the scammer so that you guys can see that clown again in case you even want to. Okay. Um, but if you'd like to be a guest on the show, let me flip this around. You send an email to I think I got got at gmail.com. You think you got got? Send your story. Send your story. Send your details. Send your text messages. Send your emails. Send your audio proof. We need proof. We need some of these niggas that's out here scamming so I can expose them properly. I don't want to expose somebody that you just don't like. I need to expose somebody that actually scammed you. Not somebody that did a bad service. Somebody that took your money and ran. Somebody that went good. Homework. <laughs> Doesn't matter how much research you do. If you invest enough money in your career. Let me show you who, uh, why, who I got got by. This nigga ain't got no kids. He did not book not one show, and he's a booking agent. What? What? <laughs> How does that happen? You know a basketball player, a pro basketball player that don't shoot, don't make no shots? Well, except for maybe Shaq on free, free throws or something. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. This has been another episode. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Leia. I'm your host, Samara Bubble.